honored to God on this morning for such a great day. Amen. We honor First Lady, amen, the officers and members of this ministry, amen, and those who join us via social media. God bless you. Thank you for allowing us to minister to you yet again on this morning. Amen. I pray that y'all work with me this morning. Amen. Uh, this pollen is nothing nice. Amen. Uh, uh, inherit this dry cough that I just can't seem to get around. But y'all work with me, and I think we'll be all right. Amen. Um, if you have your Bibles, if you would join me this morning in Revelation. Amen. We're, we're going for the juggler this morning. Amen. We'll be in Revelation chapter 13, verses 11 through 18, and then chapter 14, verse 1. Amen. saying 
He is Alpha and Omega, not the Alpha and Omega. In other words, he is the faithful witness that is able to speak from what happened in the beginning to that which will happen at the end of time. And so another misconception of this book, we call it the Revelation of John, but it indeed is the testimony of Christ and is the testimony that he is giving about all time. So one of these things that we have to look at in addressing specifically this book is that as he taught on the earth and given this testimony, a lot of the things that Christ did in his teaching was in parable. And a lot of things, therefore, in Revelation is written totally in parable because it is his testimony. So when we try to wrap our mind around it carnally, we definitely get it wrong. And this is where we kind of have the outcome of this. The word says, here's wisdom. He who has understanding, work it out uh, about the mark of the beast. And therefore, a lot of people have sought to try to um, bring about the understanding of the mark of the beast in a carnal sense. And yet, we must understand that there is such a mark that separates us from being on one side or the other. There is something visible that can be seen. In fact, when we look at the conversation that Christ had with Nicodemus, he said that unless you are born of the water, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven. And so this becomes the first step to us being able to see things in the spiritual sense. But many times, because we become such a carnal people, we get caught looking for something blatant that's going to call out this type of mark. And this is what we're looking for. And we get wrapped around the axles with every new thing that comes about that says, oh, this must be the mark of the beast, or that must be the mark of the beast. But the one thing that you got to understand is that something being stamped in one's forehead certainly speaks to their knowledge in a parable sense. You see, those that have the nature or the knowledge of the beast are those that do the things that or follow the ways that he does. These that are looking for miracles and signs and wonders, they are easily fooled and tricked by this beast because they're not looking into the spiritual sense of things. And when we get trapped up by the carnality of looking for something physical, we miss the obvious thing that can be seen but needs some spiritual understanding. And, and so what happens is we don't understand that right now we are marked. Right now we either own a mark that says we are of God, or we own a mark that says we're on the devil's team. And it's just as visible if we had jerseys on and was on a field. But the reason why we're not looking at this is because some of us are so into the scholarly of acting. We come to church and we act like we got something on and we feel that everybody who is jumping around and shouting and dancing has something that they may not possess. We don't have the understanding enough of the word of God to see what those that actually know about the word is doing. We don't have the ability to say, I see that this is clearly a hypocrite versus with certainty, I see that this is a son of God. And because we can't see that, we get caught into looking for something to happen that is already in course. You see, when you are trying to see something with your eyes, you get caught too late. You get caught because you're looking at the word in a carnal sense and you're waiting for something to happen 
that you can physically see, but if you understood how to be spiritually led, you would already see it. You would already see through things that are going on where we are in time. You can see by the wars and the rumors of wars that we're right smack dab in the sense of the, the beginning of things going into total chaos. You see and talk about the, the food shortages that is upon us. There is no trickery that should be able to befool us when we understand what the word of God is saying. Don't get caught up in a sense where you see it too late because you're looking for a physical mark of 666 written in somebody's head. Or you got the physical mark of something in your hand that shows you can buy a sale. It might be in your pocket already and you don't even know it. Again, what I'm saying is we need to get to a place to where we understand what side of the field we're playing on. Are we actually playing on the devil's side thinking that we're saved? Do we actually have the mark of the Father in our heads? Do we have the knowledge of the Word of God? Or are we just in the sense of trying to <clears throat> fake it until we make it? Are we a people <coughs> that just has a hope of getting to heaven? Or are we in a place of absolute that we know that what we're doing is going to usher us through the gates? If you don't know what mark you bear. You can get caught up trying to judge somebody else. One place that we need to get into the habit of is understanding where we are. Where am I? What mark do I possess? What do my ways convey? Do my ways convey that I know God? Or does my ways convey that I am a blatant denier of him? Am I going to church for absolutely nothing? Or am I coming to learn how to show men that this is the way of God? In other words, I don't make the challenge to you to sit and read the Bible every day. Or sit and read and read and read. Because if you're not getting anything from it, it's hurting you. If you're trying to look at the Bible and try to come to a consensus in your mind of what you're reading. You're missing the point. Some of us don't have enough Holy Ghost to lead us into what we're reading. And therefore, we cannot establish the mark of God. So, my challenge to you is to understand or is, is your mark saying that you're caring about the things of the world, you're caring about what the devil shows you, you're caring about being tossed to and fro with everything that's going on? Are you worried more about the concerns of this world? Or are you on this other side understanding that you have the patience of seeing all these things through? Are you in the point to where you are looking for better? Are you in the point to where you're looking for God to crack the sky? And if you're not around then, are you ready when he calls to you? But if you're not displaying the mark of God, let me help you. You're playing on the enemy's team. And just because it's not something visible, just because it's not something you can see with your eyes, doesn't mean that it's not going on already. And this is why we don't want to get into revelations. Because we think that because we haven't seen some very visible or vivid things that Revelation talks about, that we're not there. We're waiting on something that's going to catch us too late. And the mark that you bear right now may be the telltale sign, but you need to judge yourself. Let, let me help you. We are Revelation, but let's go back to the beginning. In the beginning, there was only two that possessed the knowledge of good and evil. That was God and the tree. And it was a forbidden thing to us. But then we came to a point to where the knowledge of good and evil was in us. But here's the difference in this triune. 
Now you have three players that possess the knowledge of good and evil. God, but God is one who having these only chooses to operate out of good. You have Satan who has possesses both and only chooses to operate out of evil. What is your choice? What side of the team are you playing on? Because at the end of the day, God tells us we can't choose both. We can't walk the midline and think that, okay, well, I walk in, in the middle and then I just hop off on the right side in the end. You must have the mark that says that I'm playing on God's side. Because if you don't, your ways are, are, has already marked you. <clears throat> if you are in these things in the works of the flesh, trust me, the mark is already on you. The word has, has allowed us to see this mark vividly, but we're looking for it to be written in somebody's head. The knowledge that you possess that causes the ways that you convey speak to the sign that you're marked with. Are you in these works of the flesh? The mark that you bear is the devil's mark. Do you look for signs and wonders and you want to walk in the church and the, the pastor touch you and you pass out and crawl like a snake all over the floor? This is the mark of the beast. We don't have that and operate on that type of knowledge. If you're going to operate in the wisdom of God, it's going to cause you to do some godly things. This is the mark that we're looking to possess. And if we can't see something so blatant as a person's ways, seeing it stamped in their forehead will tell you nothing either. So as you start to look about, start to look about it spiritually, it's going to convey some natural ways, but they're based upon the spiritual indwelling. The spirit of a man manifests naturally. This is what you're looking for. This is why the fruit of the spirit versus the fruit of the flesh has been pointed out to us. It shows us what jersey they have on. It shows us what mark we possess. And I guarantee you, if you have that mark on you right now that doesn't belong on you, it's not too late. It's never too late to change teams. To come over to the winning side. Because even though it may seem that evil is far ahead right now, I guarantee you it's going to crumble and it's going to fall. And all that's on that team is going to wish one day that they had never signed up. But if you want to play on a winning team, there's some complication. There's some difficulty. You're not going to get paid in the same sense as those on the devil's team. And these are some things you have to deal with. Some things you've got to contend with. Walking in obedience is not easy. But if the mark that you have is a comfortable thing for you, it can only be because you are wearing the mark of the Father. And if you don't have that mark, I guarantee you, you're going to wish that you had. But let us go forth and I'm getting ready to get out your way. Let us go forth understanding that if you're waiting for somebody to put you in a line and put 666 on your head or in your hand, you're missing the whole point of this scripture. The mark has been established. The mark is established. It's as, to those of us that are in the spirit, it is as visible as somebody had wrote it on you and tattooed it permanently. But this is the elevation that God is calling us to. To be able to see this. To be able to discern this. And I close with this thought. Hebrews tells us that those that are of full age, we're talking spiritually. The word says those that are of full age are those that can discern both good and evil. Discernment is a spiritual sight. That's what discernment is. I can see whether there's good or evil in somebody. 
to deserve it. I can see what you're marching. I can look in the mirror. Not a physical mirror. I can look in the mirror and tell whether I'm walking according to the mirror of God or not. This is the gauge. This is the marker. And if you're not doing things that manifest the works that are said here, your mark is wrong. You're not waiting to receive a mark. You already have one. What is it? Whose team are you playing on? You might need to know before it's too late. Amen. I'm done.